I'm here to talk about hentai. Uh, and the main reason I'm here to talk about hentai is because I had a medical emergency earlier this year. I had a pulmonary embolism. And as always, when my life is in danger, I completely panic and forget what I'm meant to do. So I started like bringing directory inquiries and going, oh my god, help me, I think I'm having a heart attack. Um, but what happened was, basically my family were getting really worried that I was going to die in my house. And then they find me like three days later when the cat had nibbled off half of my face and surrounded my, my little pony. And then of course the Daily Mail would start this campaign like, ban the sick pony film. <laughs> Naturally they blame the ponies for my untimely demise. But, um, so basically I moved back in with my dad. I'm going to have to stop saying basically. That's, oh. Okay, stop me if I say it again. Just everybody shout at me. Um, but yeah. <laughs> well, that's just as bad. I had to move back in with my dad so he could keep an eye on me. And my, it's grand, like my brother's living there too, we're all in the middle of the country. But the thing is, I was living on my own for eight years, and I have built up eight years worth of hentai. <laughs> and not just your average hentai, you know, I've got a few Yowie here, a few Yuri here, it's all brilliant too. Um, I've picked up some pretty weird hentai over the years, but you know, I thought it was going to be grand because when I moved back home, I packed all of my hentai underneath all of my other books. I thought it'd be safe there. But then this one time as I was sort of like hobbling to the bathroom and, and I noticed that my copy of Bondage Fairies was sitting right on top of all the other books. So clearly somebody had opened the box, found it, read it, and put it back. And now the question is, was it my dad or was it my brother? Which one is worse? It's one of these questions you really don't want to have answered, but it'll haunt you until the day you die. It's kind of like the story of that guy who stuck a carrot up his arse. Um, and then his mother found the carrot underneath his bed and took it away with all his dirty laundry, and now he has to wonder, what happened to that carrot? He doesn't want to know the answer, and yet it haunts him to this day. But, I mean, that was a mild example, okay? A friend of mine, she got a hold of, she got a lend of this hentai from me and it was the most deceptive looking hentai because it had two gorgeous girls in wedding dresses on the front just posing like, ah, oh, it's so sweet. And then you open it up and the next page is, like I can't even describe it because you have to stare at it for 10 minutes to know what's going on. <laughs> because what you do realise after the 10 minutes of staring is that it is a picture of a woman who has had an orgasm so powerful that she has come, puked, shit, and pissed herself, and she is sweating like a pig, and because of all this bodily effluvia is all drawn in loving detail, it's just like this mess of bodily fluids. You have no idea what's going on. And apparently, my friend left this on her bedside locker, and her mother went in to just deliver some clean clothes, and she picked it up and said, oh, this looks nice, and opened up the page. And she thought it was one of those magic eye pictures. <laughs> so she was staring at it for half an hour, just going, Oh, I think I see a bunny rabbit. Oh, hang on. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's pretty bad when your relatives discover that you have hentai. But I'll tell you the truth, right? Recently I was reading a review of a guy. He was reviewing this hentai, and he wasn't experienced with hentai at all. He was just like, Oh my god, people get off on drawings of people having sex, you, you're such weirdos. And I got really annoyed at this because, frankly, I think real porn is more disturbing than hentai. Because, first of all, real porn has a death toll that's higher than farming. And when I went to school, we were shown videos on how not to die on a farm. <laughs> And of the few times that I've actually had to watch real porn, I mean, I can never actually watch it without thinking, oh God, look at your one go. She must really need the money. She must have like children she needs to feed or something. Oh my God, double anal, double vaginal, she must be desperate. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, that physically impossible. Jeez, there's only so much money that you could offer me to show my arsehole on camera. <laughs> but there's the thing, like, hentai, Porn has victims, and hentai doesn't. And here's another thing, you never accidentally watch hentai. <laughs> I have accidentally 
accidentally watched porn at least twice in the last month. <laughs> and I mean, okay, everybody says, when I, when I say this to them, um, I say, oh, I accidentally watched some porn, and they go, yeah, sure, accidentally. Like, no, I don't want to watch real porn, that's not what I'm about, that's just gross, like. Um, but the time happened, like, one time I was watching a documentary, it was real serious, and I was sitting there with a tea and a biscuit. Um, and the next thing you know, boom, there's this cock being rubbed in my face, and it's just, I really was, I wasn't ready for it. And the porn, like, the documentary was about how porn ruined this woman's life, so I was, I didn't expect to see anything hardcore in it. I thought out of respect of the poor woman who's now deceased, they would cease showing hardcore pictures from the film she starred in. And it's just hentai doesn't have any victims. Like, I always just imagine it must be great fun. Like sitting in a recording booth, fully clothed and saying things like, Oh God, sensory, don't put that in my arse! <laughs> Fisting a melon to add your own sound effects. for liking what you like, tell them what I've said now, and you will ruin their life. Okay, I don't have an appropriate way to close my little monologue here, so I'm just going to get off the stage before I hurt myself, so bye. How can somebody who looks so sweet and innocent say these terrible, terrible things? I think I learned a very valuable series of lessons from her. Do, do you know what was worse about that is halfway after some certain things that she said, I just see Pete walk away from the tech desk and he, I look at him and I'm like, what are you doing? And he's just like, I've got to wash my hands. Like, what are you doing back there, Pete? Jesus! <laughs>